I'm Rob Lapiri, a senior editor at Bell Debbie here with the one and only Sam Huen, star of the epic drama Outlander. Sam, it's been a while since we've chatted and also since you were on production on season six. It feels like a lifetime ago, right? But what, what was your highlight? What, what did you love most about season six? It is, Rob. It's good to see you. It has been a while for, for us to, to meet virtually. Um, but uh, and also for season six, yeah. But actually, we are in production of season seven right now. But casting my mind back to season six, and wow, what a season it was! Obviously, it was uh, a very intense season. It was a shorter season um, due to various factors, you know, to COVID, um, to my wonderful co-star being pregnant and and working right up until the wire, until she almost gave birth. But um, Despite all of those um, challenges, I think it's honestly one of my favorites. It's dark, it's uh, unsettling. You see the Frasers, their popularity waning. You see this decay coming, this, this, um, yeah, this family, basically, the Christie's coming in and really unsettling everything at Fraser's Ridge. So it's a short season, but it's certainly an impactful one. Yeah, a lot was squeezed in in the seven episodes on the truncated season, and we got so much enjoyment out of it. Now we're in a drought lander again, but that's okay because you guys are working hard on season seven. I spoke to Katrina the other day. She said she's loving what season seven looks like so far and that you all seem so much happier given how difficult season six was. Is that, do you feel the same way? I think that's a good point. I think you know, six was just, it was just under crazy circumstances. And, you know, we had all of the COVID protocols and well, so everyone was in lockdown, we were at work and we were very lucky to do that. But you don't realize how much pressure that puts on you. And, and, and even just for the crew, you know, all the, the, the mask wearing and the different bubbles we had and, you know, you know what it's like, you know, being on Zoom. And it's just really hard to be creative, I think, if you're not, you know, being allowed to to to, to interact with each other. Um, and then we were also shooting through winter in Scotland. And I know we talk about it a lot, but, you know, it was a really tough one. It was very cold. Uh, we we're outdoors a lot. So yes this new season we're all happy to be back of course but also um maybe the content is also slightly lighter uh, initially um you know last season it was very heavy but some great stuff and i think for all of us as actors and the whole ensemble we all got so much to work with whether it's myself or claire or or even you know the the other characters you know cesar and lauren they got some great storylines as well so yeah really great season last one and i think we're just we're just building on that that's awesome. Um, yeah, look, I'm tempted to just see if I can get something out of you because I know, you know, that our our beloved Claire and Jamie have been ripped apart again. People are devastated, but surely that won't last forever and we will be they'll be back in each other's arms. But you're gonna say nothing, right? I mean, I will say nothing. I'm gonna say nothing. It's outlander, right? So outlander. that's gonna happen. Um but yeah, I mean we left Claire in prison, right? Uh captured and um, and Jamie is thankfully alive uh, and is now on a mission to find her. And that was pretty much, I'll, I'll let you know that. That's where we, we pick up almost. Yeah. The next. That, that's good. Yeah, you rode off on the beach with young Ian on horseback and that's Epic it. Shot. That's right. Epic shot. Yeah. What a damn good shot. Right, right after the shot with the gun going through the hand in the face, like that was... So amazing. cool. Yes, I love that whole sequence. And um, I mean, the whole finale, honestly, was um, was really fun to work on. It felt uh, high action, you know, yeah. don't get to do a lot of that recently. So it was nice to go back to doing some of that. And it felt like a Western, you know, the standoff yeah. and the shootout with the Browns. And um, and uh, yeah, and it leaves it on this positive note that at least Jamie's now out there and he's going to go and go and find her and save her. Yes, good. And kick some ass. Um, now. Is something I really want to talk about with you, Sam, and that is some of your best work on the show is where Claire is despairing to Jamie in the barn, you know, she doesn't belong there, or in the finale when she finally comes clean. It's such beautiful work from her, Katrina, as always. But you, honestly, mate, I remember in my post uh, episode recaps just raving about the way that you were so nuanced and stoic. In the choices you made as a performer, just to, it felt really honest and authentic to me. This is how couples communicate with each other mm -hmm. when one of them is distressed. It was beautiful, mate. Oh, you should be really proud of the oh, work you did in season six. What do you think? Yeah, I think oh, that's a lovely you picked up on that. I think stoic is obviously Jamie's <laughs> fortitude and it's what he his natural place. He's he's a very strong man, but um, and strong in the face of adversity. But but also um, 
yeah, I mean, this is a relationship that's they've been together a long time. They know each other so well. And and the fact that she keeps secrets from him, even this season, you know, uh, hides things from him is, is difficult. But he's also more fragile now, I think, as he's got older. Um, he's more to lose, you know. He In the old days, he was pretty tempestuous, pretty active man. Wouldn't think twice before punching someone or getting into battle. And now, well, he does, you know. He doesn't care about his body per se but he cares about losing others and um he has a lot more to lose he has his whole family now his extended family but i think that the one thing is is claire you know i think he could not now having done it for a long time yeah. he can't live without her no and he's because he is maturing and uh, getting older and a lot yeah. of us relate to that right you and i are similar in age uh unbelievably and i think you know like i walk up the stairs and i do my back out like i get really it's like and my knees make noises and i think like yeah. jamie's the same and i like that he's aging like, what do you think about the, the, jamie aging and not being the perfect idol that he was perhaps in season one yeah i mean i think he's he's matured gracefully i think he's matured really well he's become such a politician such a a strategist, you know, a lot like I always allude to like Colm, I think he has a lot of his attributes or he just he's he's now sees the bigger picture. And when we're dealing with things in history, like, you know, actual events now, Jamie knows that each move can have, you know, a ripple effect and have consequences. But um, uh, what was I going to say? There's something you just said about getting older. And oh, yeah, I think about his mortality. I think Jamie yeah. thinks about that a lot more now, um, you know, Again, he's not worried about dying, but I think it's the consequences of dying. And I think we talk about Jamie's nine lives. I think he's had probably seven or six of them. And I think each time that he it expend it costs him more, you know. Um, and yeah, I think uh, it's an interesting one because I think it's in the scripts, but I think it's in Diana's books. And I think I'm not saying anything here, but I'm saying, look, he's living these lives and he keeps losing them and, and surviving. There's got to be a point, right? I'm right. Getting, questioning this myself. Does of he? Of course. I mean, can he keep going like this? I don't know. I don't, that's the thing. Like during the finale, they talk about the nine lives. A lot of people uh, have been talking about that scene. It's a really good one. Beautifully written, beautifully directed by Jamie Payne. And he's always surviving death by the skin of his teeth. But I mean, you, obviously you must see a world in which eventually Jamie's going to run out of luck and right. maybe we might, the show might end with Jamie, heaven forbid, actually finally succumbing. What, I mean, what do you think about that? I, I mean, I'm literally in the same place as you as a fan going, uh, I just, I am questioning. I, when I read these scripts and, and think about it, you know, I, I, he keeps talking about it, Jamie. I, yeah. you know, I always feel like he knows he's not afraid of death and he's seen it. He's seen it a number of times. In most in particular, I think at Culloden, I think he really saw the corridor and whatever is beyond that, and he got pulled back from it. Um, but I, I think he, there's something about Jamie and death that he understands it. Uh, he's lived around it, and he's he's very much at ease with it. But but th so therefore, I'm saying that I think he might even see the signs around him where he's like, hmm, these things keep happening. You know, it can't be much longer. Um, Anyway, th this is all literally me. I don't know myself, I'm, but I'm just questioning it as as we keep getting these scenes that keep coming up. Yeah, it's a little bit of telegraphing, perhaps. And eventually, when the show finally ends, we will look back on those conversations and, and, and see a nice through line and narrative arc for Jamie. I, and I think that's probably I, where he's headed. I think you're right, but I don't even know if it's intentionally still no, probably telegraphed. Not. I think it's something more natural than that. And I think Jamie picks up on these things. He's a... You know, superstitious man. He's a he's yeah. in tune with, with the seasons and the, and the land and 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 I think I, I and I'm pretty sure Diana has woven that into her books. You know, yeah. without us realizing, um, it's very organic, but it's definitely there. It definitely is. There's another um, aspect to season six for you that we must talk about, and that's the, the way that you're able to play scenes in a lighter way and even comedically. Um, I don't think you get enough credit for how funny you are um you know like uh, the, the scenes with the mohawk women in episode two i think it was or three can't remember exactly the number mm -hmm. um everyone on twitter was telling me the other day that the scene where you just say i, I missed you sasanak and i must have you belt drop like 
no one there's something about the way you do that and like we've seen you on men in kilts we know you're a funny guy do you absolutely cherish those moments to just take the show a little lighter oh yeah absolutely yeah no i love those scenes and i, I agree i think there's a great humor to him and there's been humor in the past and sometimes people have said there's there's not as much humor but i think it's there you know it's just yeah. jamie's having to deal with these situations which are so serious um but i agree you know for instance when he's come back from being away and you know, I must have you, Sasnak. I, I remember even just like choreographing that. So, you know, he throws his jacket at Mrs. Bug and pat, jump, jumps up the stairs and just the, 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 the sheer pace of it and the, the lightness he's got in him. Uh, I really enjoy those moments. And, and yeah, with the, the Native, um, Native Americans, you know, when they wake him up, I love that whole scene. There was even the ending, I think uh, it might have cut a little bit of it, but uh, it's so fun. You know, I just love when he's like, like he's especially in that scene he's he's not enjoying the situation but but there is a part of him that is enjoying it yeah. but he's <laughs> having to fight against that and um i love that i mean oh. comedy is uh is a tough one and you know i've, I've just done a, this movie um, which is coming out next year um and it's uh, it's just scary stuff it's challenging but i really do enjoy it wow yeah and uh, i can imagine you could really crash and burn with comedy if you don't if you're not on <laughs> yeah. point right and then, and like it's like when malva uh, accuses Jamie of, you know, or, mm. you know, uh, Jamie, old Jamie would have really taken offense to that, taken umbrage and maybe gotten upset. But this Jamie, mature Jamie's just like, really? Okay, then let's go with that. <laughs> it's just perfect. It's really good. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I think he has aged that way. I think he's, he's, he's a lot more c calm, maybe. Um, mm. He still has that temper and that fiery nature, but I think, um, it, it takes more to anger him. I think he's always um, calculating in his head what the, the the outcome is and the circumstances are. So, yeah, he definitely has in one way. That's another way that he's aged. I think it's really interesting. His his aging, I think, is quite um, quite subtle, but it's yeah. definitely there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Katrina mentioned that you guys sometimes make jokes about the hyper realized romance between you. For example, if Katrina has to go to the bathroom and you're like, Sassanak, don't leave me. And if I die, um, I want to hear more of that because that's, I was laughing my head off when you told me that. I think that's hilarious. And it's so true. Like you can yeah. really make a joke of how ridiculous it might appear to someone who's never seen the show before. Of course it's not, but what do you think? Yeah, I know we do actually. And even the, even this season, there are moments where we're like, Jamie, stop being so dramatic. You know, he'll be like, I can't live without you. If you're going to the bathroom, I can't, I can't take it. Not five minutes without you. You know, he's like, he is, he's just very dramatic. And he has these great moments where he tells Claire exactly what she means to him. And of course, it's heartfelt. And we really, really enjoy those moments. But it's yeah. also nice to take, take the mickey out of them. And um, uh, yeah, we, we do. We, we laugh a lot, these characters. Well, speaking of Jamie and Claire and their, their relationship, it's the, it's the core of the show. I mean... I've mentioned that I love a lot of the other characters too. Like I'm a huge Rick Rankin fan. I always say that honestly I, and sincerely. I, I think he's know, awesome. I, I can't stand the guy. I know you can't stand him. I know you've got a total rivalry. You're like he's just an ass. But no, I love. Him. No, I'm kidding. Um, but that bond between you got between the two characters, and obviously between you and Katrina itself, you can see that you've got a great chemistry. And we've talked about that before. Mm. But um, I asked Katrina if she thought that was an aspirational thing. I was trying trying to work out why fans love the two of them so much as a couple what do you think it is i think it's aspirational but maybe it's not maybe it's something else what do you think mm. yeah well i mean just on the on talking about richard there i mean he's brilliant he's so funny and wow. and i love playing the humor of that relationship you know the, the initial one which was like you are not good enough for my daughter you are yeah i mean you are not a man and you know jamie's sort of this this you know you know, gentleman from the 1700s and it has a certain way of what men should be and and roger is certainly not that and just loved playing up to that and rich is so good at it and would um and then having seen that progressed and this real uh, affection between the two of them and um it's uh, it's lovely to play but i think uh you, you answer your question yeah god I, if i if i knew i would create my own tv show that yeah no one was like that but it i think it's just it is aspirational. We all want to find a love like that, an unconditional, kind of all-consuming, 
but also partnership, you know, that uh, a couple that know each other. I mean, they literally finish each other's sentences. They they always decompress. They always talk about everything up until season six, where she keeps a secret. But um, but they do, you know, they, they always work things through together. They are a real they're a they're a partnership. And I think that's what makes them so successful. And so then looking to the finale with the shootout, again, directed by Jamie Payne, who's, I think, probably the best director. And they're all great, but I think he's my favourite one of the show. Um, mm. Was that particularly challenging to do? Katrina was heavily pregnant. You're being shot at by the Browns outside. And it's it, it was really well done. And it's not something that we normally see on Outlander. What did you think? Oh, yeah. Well, I, first thing, I loved it because, you know, when you in the production meetings are talking about it, you know, it's it has this like Western feel to it. Yeah, uh, we're getting there, you know, in history. And um, I mean, look, the, the Browns are brilliant. And, um, you know, Richard Brown, especially so fantastic to play opposite. These guys are, are awesome. Um, but yeah, it was difficult because we actually shot the let me get this right. We shot the exteriors first. Uh, and then maybe a week or two later, then went and did the interior stuff. But even in the same scene, so if someone, the Browns shot at me and then and I'm shouting back at them, we shot all that stuff. And then two weeks later, you come back and then we shoot me shooting, shouting back out at them. So there's just, it's a big jigsaw. And um, uh, so it was a lot. But yeah, I love the action stuff. And it, and it, it felt, it felt like Outlander. It felt, you know, this high octane kind of uh, finale yeah. and um, I really enjoyed it yeah and it's the Jamie as hero um, that hero mentality that we a lot of us really appreciate most about him and about how you perform him where he just really comes up he, well he kind of stands up and he's very strong and reliable and um, and I suppose I'm just wondering is that the quality that you like playing with Jamie the most do you like playing him when he's vulnerable or when he's like that what's your preference if you had one mm -hmm. that's a good question because you're right i mean so for instance i think a real jamie moment is where he sort of walks out on his own and stands in front of the browns as like you have to get past me first sort of thing it's very heroic and he knows he's completely outnumbered and doesn't have a chance but but i love that about him he he put his life on the line he's put his body on the line um so i do enjoy the the heroic stuff um I enjoy this sort of the emotional stuff as well. I think you know, Jamie doesn't get emotional per se. He's, he's you know, he's, he's stoic. But but there are moments when he can't help himself. And I think when it comes to family, it comes to his son or or to Brianna. You know, I think those are moments that really affect him. You know, he has he has a lot of love uh, in him for his family. But um, he's a he's a great character to play. I really do enjoy playing him and. As you said, as we've said before, he also has a lot of humor as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I assume the quality of the writing on the show um, would be an important factor for you mm. to want to keep, continue to play him and be part of it. Seven seasons in, that's a long time for you to be on a series. What are the mm. primary motivations for you to get out of bed every morning and get stuck into this role? Like, what what is what what do you most love about still being part of the show after such a long time? Yeah, that's a great question as well. I mean. Do you know what gets me out of bed at seven or four in the morning or five in the morning is probably just my co-workers, right? It's like we're all in it together and we're all doing it. And I think that I just, as soon as I get in my car and I go to work, you know, I'm with my driver and my makeup artist and, and the whole gang is there and it's just, um, it's fun. It's a big family, you know, we are, we support each other, we're a real network. But uh, the writing, yeah, agree. And I think season six actually was a really good, uh, well-written season. Uh, and seven appears to be that way as well. I think, you know, the writers have had time. Um, and it's interesting because some episodes need more work, others need less, but uh, I, I feel I am the the the, the uh, consistency of Jamie. You know, there's a certain way that he talks that some writers get, some of them don't, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I do enjoy it. And, and I guess the bigger picture, what keeps me going? Well, I just, I wanna know what the story is. I wanna know, how it yeah. ends. I, I want to know how it ends. So, um, yeah, that's that's why I'm in this with, with everyone else. And so, obviously, it's early stages. What are the chances of continuing on after season seven, like uh, to finish out Diana's novels at least? Is that even a possibility? Yeah. It's too early to say. I mean, God, I don't know. I mean, I, on, honestly, I'm only thinking as far as seven right yeah. now. Um, but I know that, you know, we're all enjoying it. And I guess it just depends if people keep watching. And I don't even know how they would. 
how they would cover them all or, or, or if it's possible. But um, I'm, I'm intrigued. I mean, I know Dan is still writing, so we'll find out. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you've got so many things going and you and Katrina could, you know, you've had films and TV shows and other things that you're working on. You don't, it's what I'm trying to say is without sounding uh, rude, but you don't need outlanding necessarily. You're both huge stars now and so is the rest of the cast, but it's just a matter of whether you guys will continue playing it and we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, it's too early. Um, but uh, you've got so much going on, you know, My Peak Challenge for a long time now, that's Sassanac Whiskey. Uh, the Mini Kills TV show, your number one New York Times bestseller, Clan Lands. Uh, you, you're super busy um, and you've got Suspect coming out uh, very soon, which I'm super excited to see. Um, what are you, I mean, and all your charity work, What what's next for you apart from Outlander and continuing to work on other shows? What would you like to maybe explore? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I have a lot going on and um, um, I have, some some other sort of creative stroke business projects that I'm working on that could be really really fun really um, entertaining. I'm obviously working on Men in Kilts too, <clears throat> which you know created and produced. Um, so I'm really enjoying that side of it. I think that's why I do all these business ventures or whatever, you know, the books and stuff. I think it's it is a creative outlet, um, but it's about sort of creating your own material and controlling that. And I think therefore the natural progression would surely be directing. Um, yeah. I have a number of projects that I've um, sort of I've got the rights to and I'm, I'm working on scripts and, and etc but yeah I guess it's all about timing finding the right moment and the right project but I, I really enjoy that and I think I, I think I could uh, direct something that I love quite well Wow, that'd be great that'd be really cool yeah. I look forward to that uh, could you yeah. maybe just be the next James Bond can you make that happen or is that out of the question like <laughs> you haven't been asked yeah. yet yeah, I mean, oh, it's you know one of these things that people mention. I think every British actor gets talked about it. Um, yeah. but I don't, I don't know. I mean, look, I would never say never. I I rewatched the uh, the most recent one and and actually I loved. I really enjoyed it. Um, Skyfall is amazing. So um, good. But then again, you know, I I did that SAS movie you did? Back, uh, a little while back now, and I I really enjoyed that, and that had a sort of flavor of Bond in it. It was definitely a British, a very British action movie, and uh, that was fantastic. I don't know. I, I'm sure there's other projects out there that I'd love to try. But hey, if they wanna, they wanna throw the Aston Martin my way, I'm more than happy. To. Hey, why not? And the millions of dollars, and yeah, I think you should definitely say yes. But look, that's well, that's for another interview. In the meantime, mate, it's always a pleasure talking to you. I look forward to Suspect, and get back to work. I guess in Scotland when you're back there, and uh, we'll yes, yes. talk again for season seven. Thanks, mate. So nice to see you.